basic series. Today we will talk about exadecimal. We will review our learning objectives, why we need it, we're going to do some exercises in learning verification and at the end of this lesson we will summarize our learning objectives. Let's get started. By the end of this lesson we want to make sure that you understand what an exadecimal number represent. How can an hexadecimal number be converted to a binary? How can an hexadecimal number be converted to a decimal? How can a binary number be converted to a hexadecimal? How can a decimal number be converted to a hexadecimal? Where is the list significant b? Let's get started. Why do we need hexadecimal? Well, uh, in the order of lessons that we have in this current series, the next topic actually will be Ethernet and Ethernet addressing. So because of that, since Ethernet addressing actually uses hexadecimal within Ethernet, so it would be useful to understand hexadecimal numbers for that purpose. Also, it's useful from the point of view of understanding different number bases. We use binary base 2 and decimal base 10, as uh, we revealed in the prior lesson, but now this Let's we'll introduce hexadecimal, which is actually a base 16 numbering system. Alrighty. Now, more I'll on that. Yeah. So, uh, the one thing that, that they can think about it is that the larger the base is, the fewer digits that are necessary to represent a number. In this case, you can look at a 0xff hexadecimal versus a 255 decimal versus a 1111111 binary. And you can see as the larger the base, the fewer digits that would be necessary to represent a number. Okay. In exercise one of nine, exadecimal representation, what does each digit within an exadecimal number represent? Okay, as you as you probably guessed by now, each digit within a hexadecimal number will be a power of sixteen. Okay, and now to exercise 2 of 9, sum of powers of 16. We're going to represent hexadecimal 0x827b as a sum of powers of 16. Again, like in our previous binary video, we have a cheat sheet here for you to reference. If you'd like to pause and work this out, please verify the answer on the next slide. Okay, so as we can see here, uh, each as we can see here by looking at this as a power of 16, as we said, each digit is represented by a separate power of 16. Going from right to left, we can see 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on for the different powers of 16 that are represented for each digit within the hexadecimal number. So in this case, it actually means for this position where this alpha is, it actually means this A times 16 to the third power. This actually means 2 times 16 to the second power. This means 7 times 16 to the first power. And this means B times 16 to the zero power. Of course, you may be wondering what these A's and B's actually mean. Well, there's actually a handy hexadecimal chart I provided here to provide what the hexadecimal number is, what that is expressed in binary, and what that is expressed in decimal. This will come in handy later when we do some more translations. Perfect. So now to exercise 3 of 9. We're going to convert binary to hexadecimal. In this exercise, convert binary number 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, binary to hexadecimal. Again, reference this chart, and we will reveal the answer in the next slide. Okay, uh, what's actually very, very handy about this is uh, you can very easily 
translate this binary to hexadecimal because if you look at this chart of hexadecimal and you look at this chart of binary so for any given s sequence of four uh, binary uh, digits you have a hexadecimal number equivalent so for instance this 1011 as you see here 1011 is hexadecimal B and this 0111 is this hexadecimal 7. Therefore, we use this 0x just as part of the annotation to denote that this what follows is a hexadecimal number. It's just a common notation. But we can see the 0111, 1011 is 7b hexadecimal. That's correct, 7 problem. Okay, now moving on to exercise 4 of 9. In this exercise, we're going to convert hexadecimal to binary. So convert hexadecimal E, 0, F1 to binary. Please pause and work this out and verify your answer in the next slide. Here, here again, uh, we have this hexadecimal here being converted to binary. As stated before, as you can look and see, every single hexadecimal representation has an equivalent binary representation. So for this E here, we know it's 1110, which is there. For this 0, we know it's 0000. zero, zero, zero. For this F, we know it's all 1s, as shown here. For this 1, we know it's 0001, as shown here. So we can very easily translate from hexadecimal to binary just using a, a handy translation table as we have here. Very simple. Alrighty, wonderful. Now, moving on to exercise 5 of 9. We are going to convert hexadecimal to binary, then to decimal. This should be fun. So, in this exercise, convert hexadecimal 7b to binary, then to decimal. Please pause and work this out and reference the chart on the right. On the next slide, we will reveal the answer. Okay, this one here gets a little bit more involved, but it's still going to be fun. Now, the, the first part here, we're going to look at this 0x7b. We're going to first convert it to binary, and then we'll convert this binary to decimal. Now, converting this hexadecimal to binary is very simple. We just take this chart here. We can see the b, is, the b here is 1011. That's the b position. The 7 is 0111 which is here. Now to convert this binary to decimal we went through this exercise on a prior lesson but as you can see here you would have to know the different positions and what the different power to represented by each position. So start from the right we go 0 all the way up to uh, 7 is different powers of 2. So then we have to actually use our power of 2 math for each one of these positions. So this 0 is times 2 to the 7th. This 1 is times 2 to the 6th. This 1 is a 1 times 2 to the 5th. 1 times 2 to the 4th. 1 times 2 to the 3rd. 0 times 2 to the 2nd. 1 times 2 to the 1st. And a 1 times 2 to the 0. You add all these together. And as you can see, the ones that are zero times the number will cancel out, but the ones that are one time the number will carry down. You see you get a 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1, which equals 123. So this 7b hexadecimal equals to 123 decimal. Alrighty. And some sometimes people do ask, well, how come we can't just convert from a hexadecimal, skip the binary, and go to the decimal. Why Why is this helpful to go through the stage to binary then to decimal? Can you talk on that? Uh, it's, uh, it's helpful from the point of view of just teaching you how this works. Um, I believe there's actually an example where we go directly from hexadecimal to decimal in a conversion later on. Awesome. I was going to get this out. I had the question, so I had to. No, it's a good question. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so I'll cut out the conversation part. Now let's move on to exercise six of nine. Convert hexadecimal to decimal. 
Okay, so yes, that was a great question because this next slide goes directly into it. Let's look at let's, exactly. Let's look at the, how this is answered. All right, if you need to pause and you want to go ahead and work this out in yourself, perfect. Answer is revealed. Okay, yes. Now, as we mentioned before, each place within a hexadecimal number represents a different power of 16. Here I've had a candy power of 16 hint that I placed at the top here. This is the zero, the one, and, we, and so on going that way. So, we know this is in the zero, the 16 to the power of zero position, the 16 to the power of one. So this would be translated to seven times 16 to the first power and B times 16 to the zero power. Okay? Now 16 to the zero power equals one, but 16 to the first power equals 16. So we know this would be seven times 16 and this would be B times one. Now, of course, we have to translate what B is, but we have a handy table here to translate this hexadecimal B to decimal 11. So, we get 112 plus 11 times 1. 112 plus 11 equals 123. And thus is the answer. Alrighty, let's move on to exercise 7 of 9. In this exercise, we're going to convert decimal to a binary then to hexadecimal, which is going in the reverse. So let's convert decimal number one, two, three to binary, then to hexadecimal. Answer is revealed next. Okay, this is a fun exercise. You may be somewhat familiar with it by now. But in this case, in order to get a binary number to decimal, we'd have to subtract the powers of two until we had zero left over. So we see 123 minus the largest decimal value for a power of 2 that we can subtract. And we do that at each step, as you can see here, until we have 0 left over. We've done this problem before. But this 123 decimal will equal 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in binary. Now we have this handy table over here that translates binary to hexadecimal directly. Uh, we can see this binary, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 is 7, and also this binary, 1, 0, 1, 1 is B. Thus, this binary equals 0, x, 7, B, and thus, this decimal, 1, 2, 3, equals 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in binary, which equals 7B hexadecimal. Alrighty, wonderful. I think this is a really great exercise to help reinforce your binary to decimal to hexadecimal. Exercise 8 of 9. In this exercise, we're going to convert decimal to hexadecimal using the previous example. Convert 1, 2, 3 decimal to hexadecimal. You should be familiar with this now, but uh, if you want to go ahead and pause and do this, answer is revealed next. Okay, in this case, we're going to convert this 1, 2, 3 decimal to hexadecimal. Um, of course, we probably know 1, 2, 3 equals 0, x, 7, b from our prior workings, but still, we want to be able to actually do this and see what happens. So, here we have a table that has different powers of 16. 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1, 16 to the 2, and 16 to the 3rd. Okay, we, we're familiar with this, 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1. Great. Now, these are different multiples of 16 and a different multiple value. As we can see here, what we actually have is, in this representation, we can see a 16 times 1 equals 16, 16 times 2 equals 32, and so on. And 16 times 7 equals 112. Now, if we look here, our number is 123. So, subtract this 112, which is equal to 16 times 7. So, and this is equal to 112 equals 16 times 7, which is actually equal to 16 to the first power times 7. Now we have this 11 left over. So then 11 minus 11 would then equal 0. Now this 11 is actually 16 to the 0 power, which is 1, times b, which equals 11, as you notice this B. So now we have that the answer is converting this number decimal to hexadecimal 
your result should be 7B in hexadecimal. Hopefully that was fun. Alrighty, and now to our last exercise in our lesson today. In this exercise, we're going to locate the list significant bit. Use an example, hexadecimal 84. Next slide will reveal the answer. Okay, in this example, we're converting this hexadecimal to binary. Now, so the hexadecimal of 8 is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 in binary. The hexadecimal of 4 is equal to 0, 1, 0, 0 in binary. Therefore, the 0x84 hexadecimal is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 binary. And now, the least significant bit, as shown here, is the bit furthest to the right. It is least significant because, as you will note, it has the least value within this group. Alrighty. Now that we've completed our exercises for hexadecimal, let's go ahead and verify our learning objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should have been able to understand what does each digit within a decimal, hexadecimal number represent. How can a hexadecimal number be converted to a binary? How can a hexadecimal number be converted to decimal? How can a binary number be converted to a hexadecimal? How can a decimal number be converted to hexadecimal? Where is the least significant bit? To summarize this lesson, let's review some key objectives, okay? Each digit within an hexadecimal number represents a power of 16. Hexadecimals can be converted to a binary directly. When converting hexadecimal to decimal, it is recommended to first convert it to binary. Binary numbers can be converted to hexadecimal directly. Now, when converting decimal to hexadecimal, Again, it is recommended to convert it first to binary. And the least significant bit is furthest to the right. And we convert hexadecimal to binary prior to locating the least significant bit. This concludes this lesson.